Monza, and uh, and that he um, uh, went up to where his mom uh, worked in, in Newtown as, an, as a kindergarten teacher. Did you add a first name just now? I did. I, well, the name I have from uh, from three sources. Yeah. Uh, is Ryan Lanza. Okay. The computer records match. There's an address in Hoboken. All right. So, you know, Lanza for sure. Ryan, yeah, it's looking like it. I think the age my producer, Shimon Prokip, has told me was 23. So, um, uh, you know, Shimon we're out. We have crews on the way. Mark Santia and uh, Brian Thompson are both out uh, heading to New Jersey to the uh, suspect's home uh, where we will learn more. So, again, um, this is all from one law enforcement source. It is a very good source, yeah. but I just want to, uh, there's a chance that there'll be some details that change. That's the gist. All right, Jonathan, we're going to let you work those phones. So, Contessa, now the pieces of this horrific puzzle starting to come together. At least we know this is not some random, and we figured that. We can't go to motive yet, but now there's a definite connection between a Hoboken location, this individual, and this school. It may it also explain why the gunman was allowed or was able to get past the security measures in place um, if the school knew that his mom was a teacher there, that she was a kindergarten teacher. Um, uh, again, it may that may explain some things, and we may get some more information from state police when they give us a news it's briefing on this place. later on. Again, um, at the last uh -huh. briefing, and this was oh, about an hour ago, uh, state police declined to verify the death toll. But again, um, from Jonathan Deans, from uh, Pete Williams, from all of our sources working this, it does look like the death toll now is uh, eight adults killed and 18 children. Uh, and again, as Jonathan was saying, that the gunman, it appears, went into the principal's office, shot the principal, and then went into the mother's kindergarten classroom and shot her as well as, well as other victims in that classroom. And what we heard from um, a little boy who talked with Jonathan Vigliotti alongside his mom was that they were in the hallway and he heard, he, the little boy said, yeah, I heard bullets whizzing past and a teacher grabbed me and pulled me into a classroom. So the presence of mind of teachers, I mean, you wonder, and we hear about this, the fact that this is happening, you got to take a moment to realize, is this happening? But the teachers immediately jumping on action and respect them trying, and we don't know all the circumstances contested. This obviously quickly becoming a national tragedy. We've heard from the White House, the White House spokesman. We could very well hear from the president himself. Nancy Pelosi, the Democratic leader, also issuing a statement today, no words can console the parents of the children murdered at the Sandy Hook Elementary School. So, again, our nation revisiting mass shooting, and as you pointed out, the age of the victims here and the circumstances. Uh, the, they will also, uh, this investigation will expand um, if, they, if they know that there's a body in Hoboken. And again, that's um, according to one source, and we're working to confirm this for sure. But if uh, the shooter, if there's a body in the shooter's home in Hoboken, New Jersey, um, the investigation then will encompass, presumably, um, a bigger portion of Hoboken as well. And again, we're seeing the investigation there at the scene. We've seen a vehicle outside of the school surrounded by crime scene tape. And what we heard from um, Kai Simonson in Chopper 4 is that it was pretty much an off-limits vehicle, that there were not people going in and out. And, you know, we can read into that. It was parked in, in a no-parking zone um, that this may be evidence that investigators want to preserve at this point. But again, at this point, we're not seeing children being reunited with their parents any longer at that firehouse. Kai Simonson said he had not seen that at that particular firehouse for some time. Um, and that parents, it seemed, were being taken. And, and we heard from state police that they wanted, they were working their best efforts to make sure that the parents of these children who'd been killed had been informed. A little more than an hour ago, we had a briefing from some of the officials at the hospital where many of the victims were taken. Let's listen to what was said. Did receive three patients in transport via EMS after this shooting. Uh, all those patients have been evaluated and uh, managed by our trauma service. Uh, have, we had received some pre-notifications, so we had our teams on standby and were ready to care for those uh, patients. Um, in deference to the needs and respect of the privacy of the family and those patients, I cannot disclose any patient-specific information at this time. Uh, once we have gone through the proper discussions with the family, we will be able to give you further information through our uh, state command center at the, uh, at the local command center in Sandy Hook. At this point in time, 
as Dr. Murphy mentioned, uh, due to cautious uh, and control of the environment, we have uh, put the hospital and the emergency department on a lockdown status, so only those uh, critical people that need to be in the department will be there. Uh, we continue to care for those patients uh, in the emergency department unrelated to this incident, so this has not affected patient care or had an impact in any negative way. Um, we have many staff members who live in the, in the Sandy Hook area who have been uh, impacted by this. We have set up uh, crisis uh, services that we have mobilized to uh, the Sandy Hook Firehouse uh, to be of assistance. Uh, we have been in communication with EMS Command Center on the scene, uh, Commissioner of Health, uh, state medical examiner's office. So we have been in uh, constant communication with those at the scene, have been lending all the support that we can. Again, three people sent to the Danbury Hospital um, for treatment for their injuries in this shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Half past the hour now, 2.30 here at News 4 New York. And we're watching and following the developments after a mass shooting this morning at an elementary school in Newtown, Connecticut. This is Fairfield County, where students, K through 4, attend. This morning at about 9.30, 9.40, gunfire rang out. And uh, as we're told, the, a gunman walked in dressed in dark clothes. Um, and the sources that are telling Jonathan Deanst went into the principal's office, shot the principal, and then made his way to his mother's kindergarten classroom where she was a teacher and opened fire there. The school immediately went on lockdown. Teachers were told by the students, locked the doors to classrooms, sort of corralled children up into corners and against the walls until police came to tell them to evacuate. In some cases, children were reportedly told by police, run, keep on running until you get the firehouse. The firehouse um, nearby was, was the staging there. scene where parents were reunited with the children who survived the shooting. You see the numbers there, 18 children among the victims, eight adults dead. Our Jonathan Deanst, uh, working as sources, identifying the shooter as Ryan Lanza, who apparently has a tie or a home in Hoboken. New Jersey police responded to that location, and there is word that there is a body there. Unclear who, again, is contested.